So let me draw a distribution on the board and show you graphically what I'm really talking about because what's going to end up happening is that as you work problems, a lot of times you'll sketch your own picture of the distribution and you'll shade the distribution to kind of help you visualize what you're doing and then you'll calculate the answer using the techniques that I'll show you a little bit later. So for now, let's concentrate on this idea about the area under the distribution. So here if I have a regular old probability distribution. Again, let's talk about, uh, it could be the length of watermelons, you know, randomly drawn from a bucket. It could be the diameter of pumpkins. It could be anything like that. Uh, so let's say here we have a normal distribution with a mean of 50. Again, this could be the um, number of centimeters diameter, you know, uh, pumpkins are, you know, when you average them all out, this could be the mean value, so on. So let me draw this central line as straight as I can vertically, and then I'll grab another color. Uh, to show you something else. And I'm going to put a mark here and a mark here, and I'll show you what those marks are for in just a second. So I'll do my best to draw a symmetric distribution. I'm definitely not going to be great at it, but I can kind of do a semi-decent job like that. And on the other side, again, you have to use your imagination a little bit. I'm trying to draw a symmetric distribution. That's actually not a bad job. So here's our probability distribution. The mean value, or the, the mean of the of the uh, data that we have for the diameter of pumpkins, the length of watermelons, or whatever it is we're studying, is 50, right? So most of the time, if you pick something, the average value is going to be, the peak of this curve is 50, so on average, you're probably going to more than likely pick something at least near 50. So the mean is 50. The spread of this guy, we, we keep saying the standard deviation describes the width of the curve, and that's what I want to outline here. We haven't really specifically said anything here, but this value here, I said this guy right here is the mean, that's mu. This value here is the mean plus one standard deviation, and this value here is the mean minus one standard deviation. Make sure you understand that. When we say standard deviation of data, or standard deviation in terms of a probability distribution, we're talking about how much spread does the data have about the mean. If you have a very large standard deviation, then you have data spread about far and wide, symmetrically about the mean. If you have a very small standard deviation, you have a lot of data clumped neatly uh, in, a, in a very tall peak around your mean. All right? So on the graph of the normal distribution, if you were to draw these dotted lines up, now again, this is a hand-drawn thing, so it's not going to be exact, but you can kind of see what I was trying to do here. Notice that the normal distribution sort of starts to bend the other direction right here at the moment of the first standard deviation and right here at the moment of the first standard deviation. In other words, notice how the curve is sloping down this way and then right at that point it starts to change direction the other way. Right at this point is called an inflection point. You don't really need to know that other than just to kind of just know that the word inflection means to change or change direction. So when the curve changes direction, generally that's where the first standard deviation is. So if I have a curve that's really broad, that first inflection point is going to be farther out and the standard deviation's larger. And if you have a very steep peak of a curve, then of course the standard deviation's tighter. But anyway, the reason we have it written as mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma is because this is the mean. So if we take the mean and we add one standard deviation to it, we end up here. If we take the mean and subtract a standard deviation, we get this. All right. So <clears throat> the reason that's useful is because if you remember back to the concept of standard deviation, we said that for uh, these types of distributions, 68%, roughly 68% of your data should fall between one standard deviation of the mean, plus or minus one standard deviation. And although this is not exactly the same thing as what we're talking about in volume one, when we're talking about raw data, this is a probability distribution, you can still see that that kind of holds. That is around 68 or 70 percent of the data would fall between plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean. All the other data is outside of that range. Okay? Now you can go over here and you can mark this spot here and you can say that's uh, the mean plus two standard deviations, and you could say this is the mean minus two standard deviations. But the most important thing that you're going to need to know about these is you have the mean minus one standard deviation, the mean plus one standard deviation. So let's lock this down with a little bit more in terms of an actual problems, an actual problem. 
So if I give you this probability distribution right here, okay, so here's the probability distribution. Let's go back to our watermelons. Let's say the average value, uh, the average or the mean value of the watermelons is uh, 20 inches, let's say. And let me draw a probability distribution. Again, I'm, I'm drawing this by hand, so it's not totally right, not totally beautifully um, symmetrical or whatever, but I'm trying to draw this symmetrically and perfectly about this guy. And then further, let's say that uh, we have the first standard deviation is at 25, and then here we have it at 15. Now let me ask you this. If, if I tell you that these guys right here Again, not perfectly symmetric. You can see I was trying to draw it at the inflection point. If I just tell, give you this curve and ask you, what's the standard deviation of this data or of this probability distribution, what are you going to tell me? Well, you know the mean is here. This up to the inflection point is one standard deviation above the mean. That's five. And this is five below, again, to the inflection point. So the standard deviation in this particular graph here, if I'd drawn it perfectly, would be five. So when you say standard deviation of five, it's five above the mean and five below the mean as drawn here on the graph. Now the question I'm going to ask you, and I'll actually write it down, and this is the point of the section, um, what is the probability of randomly picking a watermelon? Um, less than 15 inches. What's the probability of picking a watermelon randomly from, from a giant truck, let's say, uh, that's less than 15 inches given that this is the distribution of watermelon sizes in, you know, in the country or whatever? So notice it's not asking us what's the probability of picking a watermelon exactly 15 inches. It's saying what is the probability of picking something less than 15 inches? So the way you do that when you talk about probability distributions is you, you're going to end up looking at the area. If you have to try to graphically draw what that probability would be, the probability of this answer here is everything shaded below this line here. And that means, notice this curve goes on and on and on forever this direction, but if you could add up all of the area, see this is a teeny tiny area as you get out here, and then eventually you get into substantial area here. Whenever you want to find out the probability of finding something less than a number, so it could be we're, we could be talking about pumpkins and their diameters. We can be talking about the height of human males in North America or whatever. If we want to find the probability of randomly picking somebody or something that has a value less than a number, then we shade from that number everywhere all the way to kind of to negative infinity until you kind of go off the chart there. Now, how do you actually find this area? I mean, you want a number. You want a probability, right? So you want 0.4 or 0.35. That's a probability. So the way we actually find these areas, we'll get to in another section here real soon, is we actually use tables that are in the back of your probability or statistics book to calculate the area under this uh, curve. Now you could use the actual formula for the probability distribution. I showed you before, the real complicated looking formula. You could use calculus to do it manually, but everything's tabulated in the books. So for this lesson, I just want you to understand this area, this shaded region, is what this answer would be. We'll get around to actually uh, doing some problems, real problems, later. So let me kind of draw a line here. And uh, let me ask you another question. Let me draw this probability distribution again. So this will be 20. And I'm not going to be exact, of course, because I'm freewheeling this guy here. But let me try to draw basically the same probability distribution again. Something like this. So it's a probability distribution. Uh, mean of 20, some standard deviation there. And the question I want to ask you here is what is the probability of picking a watermelon, a melon, I'll just say it like that, uh, greater than 20 inches. Now notice it doesn't say probability of picking a melon less than 20 inches, it says what's the probability of picking one greater than or larger than 20? It all comes down to area. So what you do is you find 20, which we already have labeled here, and everything to the right hand side, this whole shaded region, all the way off to infinity this direction, if you could add up all of the contributions and all the slices of this probability curve, you're going to get the area here, and this area is going to give you a number less than 1, 
because all probabilities are less than one. Um, and that is going to be the answer here. So I've given you two examples. One, when we're trying to find the probability of picking something less than a number, no matter what the number is, um, you just put the number there and shade to the left. If you're looking for the probability greater than a number, you grab the number and put it to the right. All right, so the way you would write the first guy here, this one here, the way you would write it mathematically is the probability that my random variable x is less than 15. Right? Remember, random variable means I pull a watermelon, and that's my experiment. What's the probability that it's less than 15? That shaded area is the answer. And for down here, the way I would write it is the probability my random variable x greater than 20 is this shaded area like that. And again, we will uh, compute these shaded areas uh, in a little bit. Now, I've already said it about six times, but I will just say it a seventh time because it's so important. Let me draw quickly another normal distribution here. All right, so here it is. And you'll get pretty good at drawing these things. You'll be drawing a lot of them like this. So the question is, if I want to find the probability, let's just say right here, this is 20. Just to kind of make sure you understand, the probability, what would be the probability of pulling a melon less than 20? You would go from here and you would shade the entire thing this way. What's the probability of finding a watermelon less than 35? Well, I could go over here and I could find 35. And I could go up to this little point here and shade the entire graph all the way this direction, all the way less than 35. That would be a very large probability there. So what would be the, the probability of the entire curve? If I shade all the way from down here, all the way, and get all of this stuff here of the entire thing, then the area is equal to 1. We've said that a few different times. I just want to make sure you absolutely understand. So anytime you're solving any of these problems, when you're finding a probability of this little part or a probability of this little part, you're always going to get numbers less than 1 because the area of any of these curves, when you look at the whole thing, is just equal to 1 always. So anything less than that, you're going to get a decimal. And if you remember back to lesson 1, I reminded you that probability is always between 0 and 1. It's expressed as a decimal. So this number, if we calculate it, might turn out to be 0.3 or something. This number might turn out to be 0.5. And this number, of course, is 1. So it's very, very important stuff. So we're inching our way along. We introduced the normal distribution, introduced some properties, talking about areas, getting, getting you comfortable with thinking greater than or less than, and so on. And then what we'll do here in the next section, in the following sections, is we'll learn to uh, use the tables to actually get real answers to problems. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.